So let's look on Sketchpad. Let's see what all of the A, the B, and the A, the H, and the K do. Whenever I go to graph these things, what are all the transformations for those graphs? Okay, so on this demo, what I have right now is just a regular old exponential function. And let's just see what happens whenever I change the B value, the base. If I make it, right now it's at 2, so basically it's, it's graphing 2 to the X. So I can make it bigger, and when I do, it gets steeper. But notice that it always goes through the point zero, 1, because anything raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. Okay, but it's just getting, it's bending to get steeper. And if I make it closer and closer to 1, it's going to start flattening out. If I make it so that it is between 0 and 1, now it switches from being an exponential growth function to being a decay function. The closer to zero, the steeper it gets over there on the left-hand side. And then watch what happens whenever I make it negative. Nothing, because the B can't be negative. It always has to be bigger than zero. Okay? So now let's look at the next part where I, I just pick a B value, and now let's look at to see what the A value does. So the A value is being multiplied times B to the X. If I make it bigger than one, of course it makes it steeper it's multiplying all the y values. So let me put it at, let's say, 2. So look at where the y-intercept is. It used to be at 1, and now it's at 2. It's at 2 because I'm multiplying the y-coordinates by 2. If I move this thing to, say, 3, eh, how about 4? There we go. Now the y-coordinate is at 4 because 1 times 4 gives me the 4. OK, so um, now let's see what happens if I make it let's say, between 0 and 1. It's just it's compressing it down, so it's not as steep as it used to be. It's compressing it down. And then if I make it negative, this I can make negative. If I make it negative now, it flips over the x-axis instead. So now it kind of looks like a, a diving board. OK. So finally, let's put them all together to look at the h and the k with the a value in there as well. So when I move the h, it, it almost looked like it was getting wider, but it's not. It's just moving it left and right. It's just moving the graph left and right. And since this is kind of grouped as an exponent, right beside the x, it's going to be a liar. OK, so now let me try the k. The k is moving this thing up and down. So notice whenever I move it up and down, that's going to affect where that horizontal asymptote is. It used to be at, say, the x-axis. And if I move it up here to, say, 1, now horizontal asymptotes have one. Okay, well, what do you know about that? They were all the same. The A value still does the scaling. It's going to stretch it vertically if it's bigger than one, shrink it down vertically if it is uh, less than between zero and one. And if it's negative, it flips it over the x-axis. And the H just moves it left, right. It's always a liar. And then the K is up and down, right? And from these, the ones that affect where that asymptote was, was, well, it's that vertical translation. I'm moving. That's the only thing that's moving my graph up or down, my vertical asymptote. OK. And so that's going to affect the range of my function. OK, so let's graph these by hand, SRT transformations. And then I'll finish up this first objective on exponential growth and decay. All right. So on the first one, the parent function is 4 to the x. There's a, a whole bunch of exponential parent functions. There's not just one. Every single base is its own uh, parent function. And then I would use that base to do all of the transformations on. So the first thing that I would do is I would graph y equals 4 to the x, right? And I'm just taking powers of 4. So if I were to take the... Uh Negative first power, I get a fourth. If I take the zero power, I get one, uh, one and then four, and that's, that's as much as I can get on my little piece of graph paper. So there's the parent function. Now I'm going to do SRT transformations on that sucker. So looking at this, here's my A value. So my S, I am Sing it by two. So two times the Y coordinate, always times the Y coordinate. Are we reflecting it? Well, since the two is positive, we are not. And then finally translating it, I have a plus 2 on the x, so that actually means left 2. And then a, 
up one plus one, so up one. Point by point on the three points that I have right here on my graph. Okay, before I do that though, let's go ahead and translate where that asymptote's gonna be, okay? So the only thing that is going to affect that asymptote is that K value, right? Because if I'm on, think of the origin as a point. It's a point that is on the X ax, uh, the uh, asymptote. So if you try to scale it, it doesn't move. If you try to reflect it, it doesn't move. If you move it left to right, it's still on the X axis. So the only thing that's gonna affect it is that K value. So we're going to move that up to one. So there's my new horizontal asymptote. Okay. So now let's take this point from left to right. I'm at a fourth. I multiply it by two. I go up to a half. And now I move it left two, run, two, and up one. And so there's my point. Okay, let's do it. The point at zero comma one. Multiply the y coordinate by two, set two. Move it one, two to the left, and up one. There it is. Okay, finally. So one that's at four multiplied by two, it's going to be at eight. Move it one, two to the left, and up one. It is right there. And then draw your graph, make sure, making sure that you hug that asymptote. Okay, finally, what's the domain in the range? Well, for all of these, the domain is always all real numbers. And the range is going to be affected by where that horizontal asymptote is. So this time it starts at zero and goes up. Does it include, not zero, one, one. Does it include one? No, because it's an asymptote. So one comma infinity. And that one's done. So let's do the same thing on a decay function. So on the decay function, I'm going to start with graphing um, one-third raised to the x as a parent function. So I'm taking powers of one-third. So if I take the uh, negative second power, I'm at 9. If I take the negative first power, I'm at 3. And then 1 for the 0 power and the third. And I would only expect those points. Okay, and now we're going to perform SRT transformations on this. I think this graph needs to be green. Let's go with green. Okay. Um, so SRT transformations, the 2 out front, still 2 times y. Minus 2, uh, oh, I'm not reflecting it, so none of that business. But I am translating it right 2 and down 1. Since I move it down 1, it's, I'm going to take the horizontal asymptote at the x-axis and I'm going to move it down one spot. There it is at negative 1, y equals negative 1. Okay, now let's go point by point, starting right up here with the, I can find my, my arrow, there we go. So if I go point by point, if I take, uh, multiply that by 2, it's at 18, it's going to be off the graph, I'm not going to be able to do it. Okay, so the next one, if I take 3, multiply by 2, I'm at 6, and now move it 1, 2 to the right, and down 1, there's where that point's got to be. Okay, the next one, it's 1, multiply it by 2, I'm at 2, right, 1, 2, and down 1, and there it is. And finally, this one that is at 1 third, multiply by 2, it's going to be at 2 thirds, move it right, 1, 2, and down 1, right there, negative a third. And then that's enough to graph the rest of my exponential function. All right, so that include, concludes the first objective. Um, so in the next one, we are going to look at some applications of exponential functions.